recording. We are recording, I can see it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, guys. Good morning. <clears throat> All excited to have a glass of glass. Good morning, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! So this is gonna this is gonna be in YouTube, you know. No, I don't wanna <laughs> you know cut that part. Okay, now let's make the official. You will cut this part. Good morning. Let's go to Grasshopper class. <laughs> um, today I already uploaded everything on the web page. Um, what is the web page? I don't see it right now. Uh, here. So as I told you, we will go through several things. I also uploaded a lot of files that you want to take a look, but this is going to be a grasshopper class uh, for, because a lot of students ask uh, if they could do in this coronavirus, coronavirus times some little bit of more visual scripting. Uh, and we will go first onto the animation part that I think I already showed you some of some methodologies to actually do this kind of part in the previous like CAD design class on the second week. Um, after we will go on to Kangaroo, that is a physics engine to do it in Grasshopper. It's actually kind of nice because it's not a real physics engine, but kind of emulates uh, physical behaviors. For example, weight, wind, particle collision, um, mesh, and planarizing surfaces. So actually, it's quite nice. And if you mix it this with animation, it's really, really, really useful. Um, we already had the photogrammetry class one of Fridays, but almost only two students came back. But so we will repeat a little bit this class because I think this now is quite easy. And photogrammetry is something that you can do at home in case you didn't finish this assignment. And we will go, if we have time, into form finding different types of way. Uh, cocoon, that is a mesh um, matrix solver for voxels. Curvature analysis for 3D printing, topology, and how to actually create, create different kind of shapes. Um, as always, um, really welcome for any kind of feedback. And if you can, if you are curious about some kind of uh, algorithm that you want to actually check or you're curious about, we can always modify this schedule to actually match your concern. So just send me an email or just open your microphone and speak a little bit during this session, please at least for I think the questions that you may have. So we can actually get to know a little bit more how to work with Grasshopper. So are you ready for the class? Woo! No. Ba, ba, okay. go, go, go. <laughs> so I uploaded all the files on the web page you don't need to download the idea is not to actually follow the script like oh this component does this this component does that no it's do it at the same time that i will do in them okay i think that's the best way um i'm gonna open the different files that we're gonna see today and actually is saving the file no it's not saving the file <laughs> that's nice much better because it's in exactly it's counting so before doing animations well let's we'll go for the basic of animations and we will also uh, see different plugins for doing that part uh, we will see three files one is called uh, animation with hoster that is a plugin to actually make your animations in an easy way is useful, but actually it's not necessary to, to have this plugin to do animations. A screenshot capturing, because basically all the animations we will do from Rhino and Grasshopper will be taking screenshots from the Rhino interface. I don't know if you know, but actually if you click view capture to clipboard, this command in Rhino will automatically save your screen as it is, and it's asking you, Okay, you want to have this aspect ratio, this scale, you want to take it from this perspective. So you can always, what a grasshopper does is actually take this command and embed it into grasshopper in a transparent way. And we can do it 
in a really automatic way. And that's the good point. So actually making an animation in Grasshopper is quite easy. Let's go to a simple animation. I will set up bifocals so you know <coughs> what, uh, what commands I'm using. So let's create a simple shape. For example, a center box. This is a simple shape. I will make it slightly bigger. If you need that, I zoom in more in the components because you don't see them really well on the screen. Just tell me, please. Yes. And I will color this cube in pink because we are super fancy. And I will make a point because I want to move the location of the of where this box is located. And I may want to make a slider minus 500 to 500. I'm going to connect, for example, to X. And actually, you can see my cube moving on the screen. That's nice, no? OK, amazing. How we can make an animation out of this? First, I'm going to explain you a little bit how we can create animations. Um, as you see, if we capture this viewport, that is the visualization windows, well, window from Rhino, is going to be a quite ugly animation, no? Like usually it's the, these kind of things you don't want them, like you don't want the grid, etc. So for that, you can create your own profile. For example, in my case, I have created a white workspace that just by defect is already much better. And I have created also a white technica that is in this case doesn't work because it's, a, it's not for grasshopper components. So how you can create your own Component, where is the interface? Yeah, here. Okay, it was in the other screen. So you need to click. Uh, what is display options? And you can set up your own working space. And here you can see you have several of them. What you can do is go to display modes, copy one of them. and rename it. So for example, you can create, usually I always start with shaded, but because it's already a nice component, I create a new one. And when you click on it, let's go. You can start setting up what is the background color. Do you want to see shades or not shades? You want to have like a shades plane. You can create, for example, what if the image is gonna be lighter or darker. You can create if the, if the shape has back colors, it will be the same color as the front colors, and what kind of things you want to see. For example, in animation, you usually don't want to see lines or curves and points. What you want to see is only volumes. What is going to be the thickness in pixels of the lines? Quite important. You don't want to have a thick, ugly line in the middle of your fake render. That is what we are doing right now and different kinds of things. For example, transparency. You want to have transparent objects or not. Another solution will be to use the standard mode of Arctic. It's a slow to render and it's not working. Why? Arctic and Grasshopper are not the best friends ever. <laughs> and actually there is a trick because when you have to see things in Arctic view, you always need to use custom preview. But if you just change to Arctic, that is the standard, let me make a shape. The kind of whitish modeling that is super nice. It looks like this. What happens if you don't have something draw in Rhino? Actually, it will not preview whatever grasshopper you have. And it's something so silly, it doesn't have. But let's draw something in Rhino. 
Oops. Um, I think up here, make it work really well. So I recommend you that you make something and put it really far away so it's not anymore on your screen. I haven't tried actually to hide it. Let's see if it works. Hide. Yes, no, it doesn't work. What you need to be, with, be careful is, for example, my shape right now is in the middle. It's a center box. That means it's under the set plane. So actually, whatever shape you're making in Rhino should be at the same level as your plane. Look, because if it's lower, the plane, the base plane, is moving down. But if it's higher, it will start cutting up. Ah, no, it doesn't, before it did. So that's good. So be careful if you move it too low, and if it's higher, it's not a problem. So let's move this shape away. Okay. And I'm gonna make another rectangle or another box or oh, actually I'm gonna take this box as reference so we can see it moving because we have white workspace. We will not have any reference. I'm gonna make it longer. So actually we can see our box moving its location. Okay, let's say I want to take that. Yeah? Sorry about this appreciation, but um, are you familiar with the Pocoyo uh, cartoon movies for the kids? It's a very similar like <laughs> uh, render like quality. So very nice, cool. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> let's make a slider from zero to. I want to make a ten seconds animation. Well, in this case, uh, let's make a five seconds so it doesn't take too much time to render. How many frames per second we have in a video? Come on. 25, 30, 24. Okay, exactly. Between, usually the standards are more or less, it's not 24, it's actually 23.976. Humans see movement, continuous movement above usually 22 frames per second. Complete the smoothness at around 24. And actually, this is cinema format, uh, TV, or more so the digital devices. And this is TV, TV FPS, or faster speed. So actually, that's why watching a TV uh, movie in the TV and the cinema, looks the, one of the reasons is because of this format. So let's consider just, let's not worry too much about this. Let's consider uh, animation has 30 FPS frames per second. So if we want to have 10 seconds animation, we just multiply by seconds. Uh, we will need 300. We want to have a five second animation. In that case will be how much? 150. Oh yeah. So let's make a slider from zero to one, but let's put a lot of zeros also. So we can have several decimals. If you right click on the sliders, they have something that is called animate. And this actually shows up a menu that where you can see what the preview of the viewport and you can select if you want to see from the top. Actually, this is the top of a Rhino tone or perspective. So, okay, we can see this. I want to have this resolution for my video. What kind of resolutions? If you don't know about resolutions, just call video resolutions. Let me Google that for you. Uh, Wikipedia. And you will see all the display resolutions and the frame size. So when we talk about, for example, HD is this size, this dimension. Usually HD, just HD, no full HD is 720. That is 1000 to 700. And actually 4K, you see what's the difference, why you have much better resolution. So in this case, and this is a test animation, I don't want that it takes longer time. So I just want to do a 
CGA or cool BGA that is 320 by 240. That is really small resolution. So it becomes much faster. So my resolution will be 220 by 240. And I want to have how many frames? As I said before, 30 frames per second. I want a five second animation. It's gonna be 150. And I need to set up a folder where to save my files. Don't just click OK because it will make, it will throw all the images in your desktop. So I'm gonna make a folder that is called animation one. Okay. Didn't save it. That's nice. Thank you. Okay. Animation one. I'm gonna click OK. And you will see that the scroll is automatically moving by itself and we are generating all the frames. So actually this is an animation from a steady object. So it's not really an animation. It's just a lot of a video <laughs> of a same picture. But I wanted to show you this. Meanwhile, this works. I'm gonna open Photoshop. Photoshop. And I'm gonna also open my computer is gonna explode with all this amount of things happening right now. So you can see here in my desktop animation, I have all the frames already saved. How we make an animation in Photoshop. You can do this in After Effects, Premiere, whatever, but Photoshop has an option that is File, Open As, and you select the first frame, and you click Image Sequence. This automatically will load all the images as long as they have the same number, like the core, um, one number after each other, sorry. So let's click OK. Takes a little bit. I didn't click open. Well, ah, sorry. There's a message that was in the other screen. It's asking me, OK, what is your frame rate per second? Actually, I know it's 30 frames per second. So I have a 30 seconds video, a five second video. It's opening. And if you go into timeline, if you don't have this menu, you have to go to Windows, uh, timeline to show this like uh, time per view of your video, and you can click in play. Obviously, this is not moving because we didn't move anything. So you can go after to export render video and you can render your video let's don't save this because it's quite useless and let's erase all these images we don't need them okay so what is happening here i have a slider that is moving my object i can set up to actually animate this slider but let's say i want that my animation, oops, sorry, that my cube, as long as it's growing from here to here, also grows in size. Let's have two things. How we can do this? For example, I'm gonna set up that only grows in X and Y. I don't want that the set changes because it will screw up the bottom plane of my animation. I don't want that to happen. So what we ha can do is use one slider as master slider of other sliders. That, what does that mean? Actually, we're going to transform this slider that the lower limit is zero and the top is one. And we're going to remap this one, this slider. To what? we need to remap the slider the source values we know the source domain is from zero to one and what is the target slider 
is actually from 500 to 500. So I can construct a domain. From what? From minus 100, minus 500, to 500. And I will connect it. So right now, when I move my slider, the animation is at the same time making the animation and moving my shape. That's nice. Okay, you say, okay, but we could also do this with this slider. Make the animation. This has also the option, animate it here. Okay, but let's say we are not only changing this slider. We are also changing the position. And you don't want, you cannot animate three sliders at the same time. You can only animate one. So what you need to do is connect, uh, have one master slider that is remapped to other several slides. So let's remap also this, this other slider and we want that the minimum shape, minimum size is 20 to, for example, 60 or whatever. And I'm gonna connect to X and Y. So, if you look at here, with one slider, I'm controlling several things. And that is a key point to understand the animation sliders of Grasshopper. So let's make it bigger and let's make it smaller. So we can have a cube that is growing up in shape as long as it's moving. And with this, we can create and an, an animation that moves a different way. We can not only control shapes, we can control everything that we want. For example, we can control rotations. I want to rotate where? In the same center of the box. So it rotates on itself. So let's go to volume. That is the component to actually extract the center of my rotation. And I want to connect the uh, rotation is in radians. So I want to have degrees to radians. Uh -huh. And I want to rotate from what to what. Actually, I need again another remap option. I want to rotate from zero to, I don't know, 180. So it rotates completely. And I'm creating. Uh, the domain right you now, in 100. Well, 100 really doesn't matter. It's a random number right now. So if I let's connect different panels, so actually we can see how the numbers change at the same time. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oops, sorry. So if I rotate my slider, all the numbers are mod being modified at the same time. So I can rotate the rotate and connect it to here. Okay, let's see this animation. Let's see what happens. Okay, not bad. So now I can do my animation. I can just click animate. I'm gonna save it in the same folder. The resolution is slightly small, so I'm gonna duplicate 480. I'm gonna click, okay. And we can see all the frames being created on my animation. Can you remind me what's the plugin to make the view look nice? Uh, this one, the white? Yeah. It's not a plugin, it's a def defect mode of Rhino. Uh -huh. Yes, it's Arctic. Okay, cool, 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 perfect. 
So be careful when you set up the resolution, when you are testing, set up a slow number and a small resolution, because if not, it will take so much time to calculate this. Also, for the test, I recommend you to work in workspace, because it takes much less time to actually produce the images, half the time, than Arctic mode. It's much slower. Uh, so we have the frames. Let's do the same as we did before in Photoshop, open as frame one, image sequence, open 30 frames per second, and let's see the animation. You see, it's not in the center point of view. Why? Because I was not, my viewport was exactly in this position. So be careful when you walk your position. So we just export, render video. It's just behind you again. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Yes? As soon as you're done with this, can you just um, have a panoramic of all the nodes, like just uh, put uh, full screen yes. the map of the nodes? Because, uh, yes. OK, thanks. Angle set of the resolution, it was 480, OK? And just render it. The render for Photoshop usually is more or less fast, so it's okay. I do what was the name okay. of the animation component? One second, I'm gonna show you the video. What is opening? Yeah. And I have here my animation. You see the resolution is really ugly, of course, because I was setting up a really small resolution, but it's a way to connect. And actually, the good point of this. I will say the best point is you might know, know, or don't know how to actually work with Grasshopper. No? You are, don't like too much Grasshopper or don't know how to work with Grasshopper. But this works if you have any shape, draw it, you can draw it in Rhino and just reference it. So that means you can ex import this shape and connect it instead of the center box. For example, we can connect this geometry and we can rotate it. Sorry. I'm rotating the big box that I just connected. So that means you don't need to mandatorily create your shape in Grasshopper. You can reference a shape in <coughs> actually uh, Rhino and just use a reference. And let's clean this before we show you this part. Okay, this is the script. I'm gonna erase the panels, you don't need them. Is that okay? Yes, thanks. Okay. Uh, guys, can you show please the camera because it's really difficult. I don't know, I can't see your faces and usually in class. I can see your faces. I know if I'm going too fast or too slow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. I had an idea for a plugin for Zoom where you could analyze everybody's faces to see if they're confused, if they're happy, if they're. <laughs> With an alert system, you know, you have uh, four participants that are really struggling. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that will be nice. Okay, so this is the basic setup of animations. And based on that, we're gonna grow and grow and grow and grow. So we have three points of view. One is the animation slider, that is this part. Uh, the, this is different, actually three different ways. There is something that you couldn't do Animation recording, animation screenshot capturing. Yes. Um, how to explain this part? Uh, okay, here we are rotating our object, no? But usually when you are doing an animation, you also want to rotate the camera to have really nice animation so you can move around your object. There is one trick 
you don't move yourself. What you do is move everything. And you are moving your shape in the space. If you want to actually want to move yourself, you can use hoster or two scripts that I have gave, I give you. So one is called animation screenshot capturing. That actually is a little Python script. It's opening again in my other screen. I hate this part. And basically you don't need to touch anything. But here we can set up and save the resolution, where it's gonna save, if I want to capture or not, and generating the file name. This kind of substitutes the animation slider. It's a different way, not better, not worse, it's just different. Mm -hmm. So totally we can see this, and as long as we make the movement, it's gonna record it. Now, the good point is we can move the geometry manually and it will record each time we move the slider. It means we don't need to go procedural step by step. You can go back, go up and down, so it will save the animations as long as we are moving. Not really useful, but it's good to have options. Uh, which one was that? The plugin? It's not a plugin, it's a, a small script. It's ah, sorry, animation, I, I didn't hear. Uh, okay. Animation screenshot capturing. Ah, okay, okay. It's, you, it's a component that is saved in that file. It's a small Python script. Okay. We have another one. And this becomes a slightly different. I'm going to erase this. And actually, I think we're going to... Hmm. Let's start this description for the beginning. But this, in this case, we will use this part. Is saving the files? No, thank you. Okay, so in this case, it's a C script because in Grasshopper, you can embed at the same time C scripts and Python script. So this one will save or folder, like Word image. It will take the screenshot from the, and will put the name, the scale of the image, the width of the height. And we have another part that is the most interesting one that it might say old, but don't worry because it still works. This part, actually, this small Python, will locate our camera. It means it will move the viewport. For example, let's connect the slider. So, you see, when I'm moving my slider, I'm rotating my camera. And that is super cool, actually. Because right now, we are rotating just around the object. We could do this with a rotation but we can do approximation movements and going out of the camera. And we can do it in two different ways. With an emulate, adjust with a normal animation. So let's start from the beginning. New document. And I'm going to download a file, Thingiverse, just to make it slightly fancier. It doesn't go too slow. Okay, thank you. For well, meanwhile, this process is actually is here. Mm -hmm. I just want to mention that you can uh, use a laptop trial for moving the camera as well. Sorry, what? Heptoptra has the component also for moving cameras. I, I don't hear it's cutting the communication. Sorry. Uh, I'm saying that Heptoptra also has the component for ah, moving. Mm -hmm. yeah. Arman, he doesn't know how to use it. He was just trying to ignore. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, I didn't know actually. What is in the part, actually? Good to know. Arman? In utility.
utilities. Mm -hmm. It's a camera history, no? And camera train. Mm, good to know. Let's try it after this one, okay? So I'm gonna open this, open, downloads, funny poly. Really? Oh my God, Zoom is so, consuming so much resources from the computer. Crashed, really? Okay, I ah, know. Here, so we have a nice bunny. This would say, let's put the bifocals. Bifocals. So we want to first locate the animation that always looks at or shape. No, obviously. So let's reference for geometry. Set one geometry. Okay, we have reference and we can hide. Let's find the center. Volume. The center is here. In case you don't like the color or the standard colors of Gascopper, you can go to edit custom quality. What is here? The orange and white ball and change the color, for example. I don't like at all the black one, the red one, so I usually change it to a lighter one in a more transparent. So we know the center. So let's create a path around our object. So let's create a circle. Let's create a circle. The center of the circle is going to be the center of the bunny. And let's make a radius. I don't know the size of the bunny, so I'm going to set up a big slider. Actually, that's nice. It's in the middle. We need to also create a target point because when you are looking with your camera from somewhere to a person, you are looking from one point to another point. You need to create a vector you know, of visualization. So we need to create points of visualization. We can use this point from the centroid, from the circle to the centroid. Okay, let's try. How we take points from a circle? We divide the curve, for example. And we have different points. And we can create vectors from one point to the other one. So that is vector two points from A or from B to A. Usually I don't remember, never remember the order, but the problem is we don't see the vector. We can do is vector display. We can preview the vectors and A is the answer view of the video vector. Okay. So actually we can see all the vectors right now pointing to our shape. So that means we can create different points of <coughs> visualization. Actually, each one of these points will be one frame per second. This is one frame, two frames, three frames, four frames, five frames, six frames, seven frames. No? Okay, let's create uh, a slider. Well, let's first multiply, let's make a multiplication. We want 30 frames per second. If you right click on the panels, you can type things. Frames per second. Okay. I want to have how many seconds animation? Let's say uh, 15 seconds animation. Right click, seconds, of animation. Okay. 
from 0 to 15. I'm going to multiply them. And I'm going to have the result amount of positions. Sorry. So 450. Actually, as minimum, we need to divide the curve into this amount of points. So I usually use the rule of connecting all of them. So actually, right now, we have all the vectors pointing down. And we can switch on again and see the bunny. The bunny will be look at it from this perspective, from one of these points. It's nice if we want to have a look of an animation of a giant bunny. Let's say could be possible or not. And let's color this bunny. Mesh color. Let's see if this works. Mesh. Okay. I want to choose another color. Set multiple colors. Manage color collection. Uh, color. Sorry. Let's make a. Well, like this is okay. It really doesn't matter. It's just for make it faster. Okay, we have vectors. Now, how we can make the look at the camera? For that, we will use the component that is in the script, Animation Rotational Record. It's a, actually a little script, so I just want to copy. Okay, I just want to copy these two components, and I'm going to paste them here. And you see, right now, I cannot look at my bunny. Why? Because this component is actually moving my camera. Why? Because it's going to set up, sorry, it's going to set up a location from where I'm looking at and a target. What is the target in this case? Guys, any clue? Point. Point. The bunny. It's Central the bunny, point. exactly. And what is the location? This one. So right now, I'm looking at my point. What is happening here? You remember the list? I'm sending to the location, actually, 450 points. So this thing is trying to calculate 500 points at once. How we can, we just want to have one frame at each time. So for that, we can use list item. Remember with list item, we can choose. Actually, we have too many points right now. Actually, the point is here. And I'm going to make a circle uh, sphere so you can see it. This is just for visualization purposes. Uh, 50 radius. Too much. So this it will be our camera location will be, and we need to set up a slider from what to what from zero to five hundred fifty. As to put the slider, we need to actually know the limit of the slider. It's really easy to uh, make a mistake and don't use all the points. What we will use for this? We just did it before. We're gonna create a master slider that we're gonna remap. Remap numbers. We connect the value. The source is easy. You see, I'm always creating a slider from zero to one. We can actually create any kind of a slider, but I'm creating zero to one, so it always matches the source code. And we're gonna create a target construct domain will be from zero that is the initial point to what what is the maximum one 450 exactly and we connect to the list item so if i move this slider i'm going to see 
the camera rotating. Yes? And now, instead of connecting all the points, I'm gonna connect the locations. And then you see that it's white, blue, because we are looking from inside the sphere. The switch of this or erase it. So right now, if I rotate, I can move my bunny. I'm rotating on my bunny. I have a master slider. I usually use uh, groups. That is something that you can use for making packs of things. If you right click, you can make a group. So and you can change the color of the group. So for example, this is my master slider. I usually do it like this. I double click and it becomes big and I change the color to blue. So I know this is my master slider and I can easily rotate my script. So I have my locations. That's nice. Actually, and I don't need to think, yes. Um, I think I have a problem with the C sharp script node. It's completely different, it has uh, different inputs and outputs. Did I miss uh, probably some uh, installation yes. of plugins? You, no, you took this one, no? Yeah. Okay, but there is another one in the middle. In, in the middle? There is one located here and one located here. Oh, sorry. This, where is this file? In the yeah. chat? Uh, no, it's in the class link. It's here. Animation screenshot. Uh, rotational recording, I think. Let me see the it's name. The class link. Uh, rotational recording, yes. It's in Fab Academy. Uh, you go to Make Club and Grasshopper class. Okay, sorry. Thanks. No, no, don't worry. I just copied the link in the chat. If I can open Ah, it. that's amazing. Amazing. Thanks. Uh, okay, here. Okay, so let's keep going. One name. So actually, we have the vector. What happened? Let's clean this up a little bit because it's becoming slightly messy. No, we don't. We this part is just for visualization. So we can switch like this. We can also move this a little bit. Here, this is a group because it's uh, for getting the frame rate. And this is the domain to actually connect the targets. This, we don't need it. Okay. What happened right now? I want to look at my bunny from this perspective. So how I can do this? Just, okay, make it bigger. And the good point is it's gonna take already, it's gonna automatically, each, each time we change the position, it's gonna move. We make the circle bigger, it's gonna update the viewport. How we do this? Actually, we just only need to move the circle of position. Okay, so I'm gonna move it up. Move my circle in Z. How much? I don't know. So I'm going to set up 50. This model seems quite big. And I'm going to connect the curve. So you see, it's changing the perspective. Actually, this is like it's too small. So I'm going to make one really big one. Okay. Let's see how this looks like. A cone, not bad. Okay. So let's move the slider to see the cameras. And actually you see, I'm looking at all the vectors at the same time. So actually I'm gonna switch off all these parts. So actually I only see the circle that is gonna be the target one. I'm gonna see the list item because is the point that I'm looking at right now. Okay, this is much better. I'm gonna explain you also something that we have here. Right now, we only have 
one little target. We only have one point. What is that point? Is the center of the of the bunny. It's exactly the center. When we want to do more complex visualizations, we cannot have a center, or at least I don't recommend to have a center. So I will make right now another circle to have the same amount of points of division from target and for location. I want to have the same for target and location. And right now they don't match. We have just, let me zoom in. We have just one center and we have 450 locations of the camera. I want these numbers to match. So I'm gonna make a circle, really small. Actually, I cannot zoom in. If you cannot zoom in in Rhino, you can make this trick. Make a point and type ZS and click enter. It's zoom in the point. So now you can actually move again. And I want to divide my circle in the same amount of points. How many points? 450. And I need to actually connect the same thing. I'm gonna connect this one. And I'm gonna connect also a list item. It's the same for both. And I'm gonna connect to target. I see a chat. For me it works. Okay, let's see. Uh, you can save link as no click on it because when i click uh, uh, try alt clicks maybe sorry try alt click maybe for me it works if i click it just downloads it for me as well it's working that way i will take a look at it Good. Marco, try Alt and then click the link. I don't know if it will work. I will try to fix this, okay? Sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm trying exactly what you're saying. Wait wait a second, I'm waiting for any uh, it's just downloading. result from the... It's not working. No, not doing anything. I'll, I'll, I'll just send you the file via message. I don't know Thanks, man. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, so now we have all the points of view. So let's try again. I just repeat the same. Let's repeat. We have a circle for the target, a circle that we have moved up for the for the locations. We have divided all the curves into points in the same amount of points as we want the frame per second and the seconds of animation. And we are selecting one by one from both and we use a C script for location and target. Let's see how this looks like. If I move my slider, actually, sorry, it's not in the center. It's a, if I move my slider, oh, I hate this part because it's centering the camera. Uh, if I move my slider, I'm rotating my bunny. That's nice. So actually this part could be considered done already. I can switch off the pre-illustration off of everything except the bunny, and I can move to Arctic, for example. As always, Arctic doesn't preview anything, so let's show up the bunny. Huh. As you see, mesh color actually doesn't work in Arctic. So custom preview. Okay. So we can have the animation of the bunny rotating. That's nice. But this is a really simple path, no? It's a boring and it's annoying. What you can do, for example, what we are dividing, guys, 
this, no? The circles. Come on, a little bit of feedback. We are dividing the circles. So what we can do is create our own custom path. So let's create a curve that, for example, is going to look like an arc. OK, and I'm going to move it, and it's going to be my camera location. So for example, if I move from this point of view, I'm going to close, be close by, and I'm going to also change in the Z. So I'm going to check the orientations. And I'm going to move up and move down. For example, it will be a really cinematic shot. Or at least I will try to make it a cinematic shot. So instead of connecting my initial circle, or in this case, the circle, because I have moved up, if this is really far away, so let's get close. I'm going to reference my curve. OK. And I'm going to set my curve from here to here. And I'm going to replace the curve, the initial circle, by my curve. OK. Let's see what happened with this animation. Wow, amazing, eh? So now I can modify my geometry and just take a look to see how it looks like. Let's make it more complex. So the curve is always I'm pointing all the time and focusing, but always the bunny is centered on the image. That sometimes, in case of um, photography, is not that good because you don't want to have all the, all the things in the center. Usually, you use the rule the Sorry, I don't only know this instance. It's a three four rule. Uh -huh. Sometimes it's like slow. Ah, de los tres tercios, sorry. So you want to have your objects located, oh, like this, in one of the thirds points of the image. And this gives a much better cinematic look. So how to follow this? Actually, with right now, we cannot do it. So what we need to do is also replace the center looking path of our image. So we need to look and create another curve. And this is annoying part because you actually need to look at and try different several times the secondary curve. So right now, for example, I can see that I'm not looking at my bunny at all. So I need to move my points. OK. OK. OK, let's try next location. Actually, why is happening this? Because I have a I have lot of less points here than here. So I need to also make this line shorter. I'm dividing my line in the same amount of points. So let's try, okay, more or less, seems nice. I'm going to make it slightly higher, so it's not that accentuated, but if I make it higher, I'm out of range. I'm going to also move this one lower. Okay, not bad. Not the best animation ever, but it still will work. I can hide this. 
I can also move this part, this thing really far away. Actually, my camera is in this side, so I'm going to move it here. And I'm going to set up Arctic. And let's try my camera. So I'm going to get really close to my bunny, slowly. Too much, actually. And the bunny is going to disappear from the other side and go back in the camera again. So this is about working with the trajectories of your curves, the initial curves. As long as you modify them, they're going to work. For example, you can also do this kind of thing. Um, that is a loop one, quite standard. It's not a perfect loop. So let's set up one curve. I'm going to move it up and I'm going to make this one smaller in the center. Hmm. Why I'm not looking at my bunny at all? You see, the top position is actually the farthest one. And the original one is actually I have started here and I have finished here. It's the opposite of what I want to do. Why? Because I have to draw my curve from this point. So I need to flip my curve. That is, you can flip your curves, flip curve, and it will change the initial start position of your animation. Amazing. Not that amazing, but let's make it even smaller. Really Hollywood like. <laughs> um, okay, so for all, this is a second way to create animations. More, more dynamic animations. <clears throat> Do you have questions on this? No. no? I just yes. want to ask something. Uh, do you think it's possible to use two curves instead of one curve? So you're kind of dividing first curve like half you an of the, and then no. it's jumping. You, the idea for that is to use, if you mean only use one curve, no? No, two curve. So it's like you, you're going to one direction and then jumping to next curve and then doing another. Yes, you just need to connect both. Okay, how we do that? Uh, you can, for that, this is slightly more difficult, but not that much. Actually, you have one curve here, uh, let's hide. I have one curve and another curve. These two paths, paths, they don't match too much, but you can divide it. Also, this curve. What you do is actually you stack them because you are getting points. No? Yeah. You have the 450, you flatten just in case, and you stack the next one, 250. And you got 902 points. So now what you need to do is remap from 902 points. So you can actually get all the positions. But as long as you can stack points in line, it will jump, 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 jump. And from this one, jump to this one, and jump, 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 jump. So actually you can have several animations and record everything at once. Yeah. Cool. Um, how we record this? Right click, you animate the slider, and you set up the same frame count. And in the moment you animate, it will start moving the slider and save all your frames. You see the script here in animation rotation slider, it's slightly longer, but actually it's really, really similar. In this case, I think connect center object here. Okay, let's follow my own things 
uh, geometry. Oh. Said geometry. Okay. I'm gonna hide these things. I don't need them. So what I'm doing here is finding average that is actually the same as the center. This design, this average works with points, not with volumes. So I'm gonna try volume. Okay. So this script is actually getting the circles, the first one and the second one. You see this circle is too small. It was the same problem as we had before. Okay, and we have the inner one that is really, really small. Then you can see it inside. It's just what we did. And we have the camera path and the target path. We have the thought frame number that is the same as we did before of the amount of frames. But here we can say that we want more division or less division at the start. So we have uneven and we can have accelerations. So we have more space between the points and less space because we want to have a focus zone. How we do this? We have uh, our animation slider and we want to create how many steps from zero to one. We want to create 200 numbers. Two hundred numbers from zero to one. That will be, for example, a short and fast animation. It will start with jumping really fast and making small jumps in this zone. What we want we want to have? We want to grow fast. Sorry, the opposite. We want to go, grow really slow, accelerate, and after the slowdown. Because instead of dividing. My curve, oops, sorry, divide my curve. Here you are dividing, sorry, this is not a curve, uh, camera path. Instead of dividing my curve, camera path, that is this one, I'm going to evaluate my curve. What is evaluate curve? Let's create a curve so you can see. I'm going to reference my curve and I'm going to evaluate my curve. So, evaluate curve, it needs a factor. It's set up a position in the curve based on a t value. The t value uh, needs to be usually from 0 to 1. From 0 to 1.0. Why? Because in, in theory, this curve, we don't know the length, or we can know the length, but you need to do a lot of things. We need to make the length, measure the length. Okay, so actually my slider will be from 0 to 1028.91. That's really annoying to do this every time, no? So what we can do is set up a slider from 0 to 1 and just click reparameterize. So it will constrain these dimensions to zero and one. So the end point will be one, and we can actually take the different positions on the curve based on a slider from zero to one. It's like a remapping, but for curves, the reparameterization, reparameterization or evaluate curve. Okay. So what we are doing is actually the same for the big curve. We are evaluating at a long list of positions, a range of positions. How we have created the range? Based on the frame number, that means we want 200 frames. I want to create 200 positions. So from what? From zero to one, because to use graph mapper, we can only use from zero to one. And actually, it's ideal for us because evaluate only works from zero to one if you want to do it nice. Actually, this should be reparameterized. Ah, actually, no. 
we are not reparameterizing because we are sharing automatically the domain. So in this case, it's not reparameterizing, but measuring the length. You can avoid this part by reparameterizing, actually. Um, so we are measuring and we evaluate all the points. And as we are evaluating all the points, we just need to select one of them at each time. So how we evaluate this? This is a slider. You can see the list item is connected to this because this animation uh, works in a different way. Let's not think about this part, okay? Yet. Actually, right now this works on its own. Let's choose a slider. You can choose a lemon or a slider and you can start moving the camera. You see, I'm moving. We don't see it well because I'm moving manually, but in it, Ideally, it is slowing down, going really fast, and it's slowing down. You can try in your computer, maybe you see it better, or just export the animation. And just animating this slider, everything will work. We have another option that is anemone. Actually, it's quite silly because we don't need it, but it's a good point of automatizing everything. And we always want to automatize as much as possible. Anemone, one of the plugins I ask you to install. Mm -hmm. uh, Edu, Anemone is crashing my Rhino for some reason. Do you know why? Okay. Um, just install it, using it or not using it? Mm, no, it, uh, I had this problem before with another uh, Grasshopper plugin. Whenever I um, like try to open Grasshopper, I open Rhino, I open Grasshopper and the whole thing crashes. So then I have to go to Rhino and delete it from the component folder and then it opens again. That's weird, actually. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if Anemone doesn't work for you, you can use one of Etero Heteroptera. That is another methodology, but let me first explain what is anemone yeah, yeah, yeah. and after what we do. So anemone here we have different types. So let's go. We have fast that is repeated utilities, but basically we use this one: loop end and loop start. It's for adding values or repeating things of instructions several times. So the first thing we need to do is connect both together. And N is going to tell, okay, whatever you are doing here, how many times you want to repeat it? I'm going to say 100 times. T is the trigger. It means start or reset. So I need to set up a button to start. And can the you loop automatically start. Sorry? I'm sorry, can you put the names of the components? Yes. Thanks. Sorry. And we need to set up what, for example. I'm going to switch off everything, because if not, it's going to be a mess. And I'm going to go here. Okay. I'm going to create a point. Construct point. And I want that the point moves up Z uh, five millimeters each time. So my point actually is going to be too much because I'm moving 100. I'm going to zoom in. Sorry, I cannot zoom in. Okay. Okay. So each time I'm going to go through this, I'm going to move the point up one. And I want that the data comes back. You see? Whoops. It's automatically. So actually, what this is doing is taking this data, looping it, moving one point, coming, it back, coming back to loop start, and add another movement 
So this is looping my point to this 100 times. C is for the counter. So actually we know the amount of movements that we have done all thing now. Let's restart. You can see it's moving tiki 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 all the time. Right now we only see the last movement and we also see the intermediate one because we have seen, we are seeing it, the one previous before the movement. So usually what you want to do is switch off everything and just see the last one. And you can see the point moving by itself. It will be like an animation slider, but automatized. How we can record all the positions? If you right click on the component, you can record data. So now it will record all the positions and it will create all the, I will show you the historic points of all the points. This is useful for a lot of things, not only for animations. Actually, anemone is really useful for recursivity growth. Uh, that maybe some of you have already seen in the lab. Um, this kind of algorithms that how they grow. So for example, this is a line that splits in two, that the same line after it splits in two, but the other line is also splitting in two. So actually you can split, 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 and reproduce these kind of things. And this is how actually anemones grows in a kind of way, or also fractals. Fractals behave in the same situation. In this kind of, you use this kind of algorithms. So they're quite useful. And that, <laughs> this is my video. Uh, so why we are using this? Instead of using a slider, we are using a mnemonic to actually produce what? For the counter, we are counting what? Zero and adding. And we are using this to don't use the slider, but to use this another piece of a script that will be the one that will save automatically the files instead of using the slider. Do you understand? Instead of replacing using the slider, we're going to save with another C sharp component, and how we are going to create each one of the positions automatically because we cannot do with list item. We cannot move the slider manually with list item. We will do it with anemone. How we can replace this, Daphne? We can do it with heteroptera. Heteroptera has a component that is called oil count. Let me see what it is. I never look for the components. Utilities. Oil count. It's in streaming. So oil count is a, it's a component really funny. It will, it's the same as an oil can and itself. It will drop one data, one data, one data, and one data. And you will do this based on seconds, usually. Uh, you can get a list. So I'm gonna make a series of numbers, random numbers. For example, my series of positions. That's why I ask you to install Eteroptera, because it has a lot of utilities that are really nice. So let's make 100 uh, numbers. We have a list. Okay. We have the reset. We have the drop trigger. That is a boolean. It means, do you want to run this component? Okay. And we have the reset. That will be in the another button. And the type of mode is going to loop after the list finish is going to, it's going to start. Or ping pong is going to go from top to bottom and from bottom to top. Or it's going to dead end when the list finish just stops. And repeat the last, just repeating the last one. In this case, we want the dead end. That is the mode two. So in the moment we click OK, let's see. Why is not working? 
Well, let's have the timer. Mm -hmm. There is another Boolean that you have yeah. to do that. You don't need to press the, the drop. You have, you only need the button and that's it to reset. So one, and it's doing it each second. So we can make an interval of 500 and it start counting all the numbers automatically. The good point is we can use this also, not only for points, for numbers. We can choose points, geometries, or whatever. It just takes whatever thing you have in this list and all counts it. You see, it has finished, so it's null. Let's present. And the timer is to set up how much time it needs to spend between each frame. This solution is not as good as this one uh, for two reasons. One is sometimes the computer takes time to render the screenshot and you don't know how much time it takes. So the good point of the loop is the loop is stopped until all the calculations are done. All you can is based on time, not just the calculation time of how long it takes to calculate this script. So you might drop and fail a few screenshots. So for that, I would recommend you to use a higher interval, even if, the, if it's gonna take much longer to animate your slider, like your animation. But it could be another solution. Like I will not set up more than two seconds. If you are taking more time than two seconds to save your screens, your viewports, it means your animation is super heavy and you need to reduce it. But you can always, if you have all the night long, you can just use 10 seconds timer and that's it. Just leave it all the night working. That's why we use computers. So they work for us. Um, anybody has any questions before we jump away from animations? Uh, I have a general question I do. So what yes. does exactly um, he parameterize? How is it called? Does Reparameterize. Okay, let's explain it again. What is my curve? Yes, it's my cuckoo. Um, is it the same with remap? Uh, kind of the same. Okay. Um, actually, it's the opposite. Well, okay. Let's explain the difference between remap and reparameterize. With remap, we have a value to remap. No? Let's say we have a... A slider from zero to one, always, is just the easiest one. And the source is from zero to one. The maximum and the minimum is zero and one, no? We know the limits of this slider. Yes. Yes. Okay, we want that everything scales up proportionally to, for example, zero to 10, because I think this is the easiest way to see it. Construct domain. So my target is from zero to 10. Let's make it. And let's see the results. Okay, so if I click one, what will be the remapped value? Sorry, if I click 0 0.1, the remapped value is one, no? It's the same proportion. If I'm in half of the slider, I'm in half of between these values. So it's proportionally taking the spacing, let's say, from zero to one, to ten. So if you are in this side of the slider, it will make this approximation. If you are in here, it will go here. If you're in the middle, it will go in the middle. Sorry for that line. 
if you are here, it will go here, and if it will go here, you are here. You are keeping the same proportional distance between all the numbers. This is what Remap does. With reparametrizing, we are kind of doing the opposite. The line could be, for example, from 0 to 10, no? We can have a line of 0 to 10. When this is our value, and we need, we need to tell, I'm going to start copying things, it's so messy for you, construct domain, we need to tell what is the maximum values of the minimum and the maximum. The mean, maximum is 10, okay? 10, the minimum is zero, let's check it, is zero, okay, source, and what is our goal? Construct domain. In this case, will be the opposite. We want to go from zero to one. It's like reducing them. Okay, so, We are remapping from zero to 10, but from zero to one. What reparametrizing is doing is hiding all these parts. Reparametrizing is kind of doing this, but instead of with numbers, we are doing with geometries. Why? Because let's make the equivalence. For example, this is our slider. This and this will be the same from zero to one, no? And this is measuring what? We need to measure the length of the curve. Okay. And we need to stop what is the minimum length of the curve. It means the initial position. The initial position will be zero in a curve. So this position is zero. And this position is 1,028. That is the length of the curve. So we are remapping from zero to 1,028. That is this number. Let's erase these things. So actually, we are we are doing is remapping the values of the curve that are from zero to 1,028 to what? To zero to what? Yes? Yes, so reparametrizing always does it from zero to one. No, whatever Re we... No, reparametrize always constrains. What it does is constrains the values from, the, from zero to the total length of your line to values from zero to one. So actually, if you have one, you will, you will be at the maximum of the length. That is 1,028. If you are in 0 0.5, you will be, what is half of the length? 514. If you are in zero, it will be in the position zero of the length of the curve. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. I understand. And actually we can do the same for surfaces, it becomes bidimensional, this part. So for example, let's create a surface. Uh, this components that are really, really useful. Okay, we have this surface, surface, set one surface, okay, hide it. Okay, so I want to know the middle point of my surface. This case is easy, it's a rectangle, no? We, we can measure this side and this side and just make the cross. Okay, what happens if the surface is, oh, so many things. Mm -hmm. I do bifocals. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's completely okay. What? Ah, it's here. I'm gonna modify my plane. So I have a 
this surface. This surface is going to be quite tricky to know the center of the surface, no? How we do is a UV value. UV value, it takes the subdivision of one of the zones, one direction of the surface. It means all these divisions radially. This is U and this is V. And for that, we need to do the same. We will need to deconstruct the surface and measure it. Uh, actually, I don't know if you can, dimensions of the surface, U and V, in one direction is 1,085. Another one is 1,034. So actually, you need to create the middle value for both and assign to U and V. That is a lot of work, no? We can just reparameterize and use another type and double slider. What is a double slider? It's an empty slider. Creates values, coordinates in U and V. So actually we are creating the same as slider from zero to five, from zero to one. So we just created and we can evaluate actually the surface in the middle point. This is doing B dimensional, but it's exactly the same concept as evaluate curve. We can do this with curve, with refs, surfaces, meshes, etc. There are different components. Each time, of course, increases the complexity, but still works. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Okay. Any more doubts, guys? No? No? Okay. I'm going to close all this. Actually, this script, I didn't save it, so I'm going to save it and upload it to the class. Um, it's some spring thing to can do. Animation. Ah. And we have the last one. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. In this case, we have created a simple shape by focals. Yes. So I have created a simple shape. Weaverbird has some components to create shapes. Um, basically, we are just coloring the mesh, not a big deal. You cannot don't do this and just create. Um, any shape. This is a sample shape, not a big deal. So, hoster is kind of funny. I don't like it personally. I find it quite confusing. But we have only three components in this slider. Let's take this out. We have get camera, set camera, and animate camera. With this one, with hoster, what you can do is move yourself freely on the screen and save these locations. Some programs like SketchUp works in this way. You go to some positions, you save the recordings, and the camera will automatically be interpolated between those two screenshots. So to save the position, we just, click, we just need to set up a button. OK. We can have a reset button. So if we want to erase it, and we can have play. Play will be what? Again, everything at the dividers. Okay, so I'm gonna save this position. I'm gonna move here. The back point is always goes to the, this position. I don't like this part. Let's just take out the slider. Click, do it without the slider connector, it's much better. Click, and now I'm gonna rotate back. Click, click, 
and click. So you click in play and you will go between all the animations. And you can see the point is I have made a super weird movements and the pollution sucks. <laughs> so I'm gonna reset and try to save again different positions. See if I can do it in a better way. Okay, let's see. Yoho, this really sucks. Maybe it's because maybe you you are saving all the position of the camera on the po on the zero point zero points. So I guess. But that should not matter actually that much. Ah, we need to activate the camera. Sorry, um, Bolian. As, as I told you, like I don't like too much this uh, volume. Oh, yes. Right now we are not getting the location of the camera. It's null, so we need to save it. So right now we are getting the position. Let's press it, and let's see if now what. Let's fill all the components. Never use it. Mm -hmm. Lens, let's have a 50 meter lens. What I was doing here? That's weird. Exactly the same. No idea why this is not working right now, guys. The other option is not to do, do this thing manually, but to use the components as we, we did before. Getting a curve around an object that this component, this, co this plugin has two ways to use it. Uh, manually positioning, or automatic positioning, that is the one that we were using before. Evaluate the curve to get the location point of the targets. What is the location of the camera? That really depends. Right now, the location of the target is this one. Actually, this is wrong because we need to target what we need to target the center, that is this point. And we want to have the location that is the point in the circle. The good point is we can change the lens that is the perspective on a, the same as the reflex camera. You can have a wide light, wide, wide lens, or you can have a tele lens. And you can set up and click to activate this part. So as long as you move the slider, you will animate it. It's kind of automatizing a little bit the C sharp script. What I'm guessing is why this part is not working properly. Maybe it's because we have two components on. This could be. Let's present. Okay. One, two, 
and three. Okay, yes, sorry guys. We had took the same component twice. <laughs> so silly. And it was not working because of that. So actually, you can see it's, it's an easy way. Let's reset this one and let's make more or less a nice animation. Save. I'm going to move here. And after I'm going to move here. So I'm supposed to go up, okay, and go down. So it's interpolating automatically my positions. I personally don't like it because if you want to really control how it interpolates between position, it's doing for you. So it's nice, it's automatizing, but it's not doing it in a soft way. For me, this movement is weird. And if I do it myself with my own curve, I will make it much smoother. But that's just personal taste. If you want, before we jump into uh, this, actually, we just finished animation. If we, before we jump into Kangaroo, let's have a small break, 10 minutes break, okay? And be sure that you have Kangaroo installed, please. Hello, I'm alone. No, you're not. <laughs> you're not alone. You will be serious, the pose. Okay. I'm gonna... I do. Can also, I just want to ask, uh, could you show us some uh, application like for the flux upper? Because I know that you, you were using it before. Uh, Arman, like, I, I want to show also that, but I think it's really far beyond like 95% oh, okay. of the class. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> like, to be honest, like Flexcopper, I, I also have a lot of trouble to use it. It's not straightforward at all. Uh, okay, because I have uh, a problem with it as well, that's why I ask. <laughs> okay, no, just just send me the, the file or I can help you with the camera and go with it. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, what is Flexcopper? Um, Flexcopper of Grasscopper. These kind of names are weird. Um, Flexcopper is a physics engine, not especially, not only physics, but it's a particle simulation engine. What is particle simulation? Let's see a video. When you want to simulate particles, for example, wind, wind, ideally in computational design and competition, uh, in competition, we measure as small balls or small particles. Particle calculation is really resource consuming and it's not easy at all. Actually, Kangaroo sucks at particle calculation. It's really good for a lot of things, but that is where Flexcopper comes in. That using some libraries of NVIDIA again and different things that is also beyond my knowledge of computational is much more optimized for particle calculation. For example, if you want to do a fabric in the wind, a good way to simulate it properly, it will be by throwing millions of points to that fabric and see the deformation of the different points that conform that fabric. And actually that you are calculating millions of points at the same time, or the same as calculating fluids like water, air, like any liquid, will be fluid calculation that is fluid dynamics that is one of the most complex fields in engineering that is also done with particles. And actually, Flexcopper is really good at it, but it's not straightforward at all on how to use it. Actually, it's really good, for example, for simulating cloths on the wind and these kind of things. But the good point of this is only good if you want to do a specific particle calculation. Okay, let's see. It's really realistic. With Kangaroo, we can get to like 10% of the reality of the particle simulation compared to Flexcopper. But making this one is really. But it's cool. We're going to do some things like this, but simplify. Okay. I'm gonna stop 
pausing the recording to part two, grasshopper class of this Thursday. Let's go to Kangaroo. Uh, Kangaroo is a physics engine, simplified physics engine. Uh, I'll always state that Grasshopper is not the best program for anything, but it's like a Swiss army knife. It's good for trying in, sim in a simple way all the different things that a lot of programs have in a really specialized way. A physics engine talking, Kangaroo allows you to simulate collisions of things, in this case, particles of objects, uh, have constraints of lines, dimensions, uh, materiality wise uh, properties, uh, has pressure, has wind, has um, smoothening, has allows you to pl make planes out of non planar surface. And allows you to simulate and has also um, different kinds of physics things. Um, the bad point of Karamba, uh, Kangaroo, sorry, is it doesn't use like a standard physics values. Let's say uh, you can simulate the properties of plastic, something made out of plastic, like your mouse, based on values. But those values are not standard to actually the industry ones. For example, plastic is measuring joules and elongation properties that are measured in, in newtons etc the bad point of kangaroo is it doesn't do it in newtons it does in a rom some random values that we need to actually find them. before we jump onto that we will need to do uh, some mesh transformations oh sorry my mouse froze uh, no. So let's first know how to treat and how to mesh properly things. Let's make a center box. Because this is really important in Kangaroo and a lot of engines. Let's put bifocal to bifocal. So I'm going to make a center box big enough so you can actually see. And it's really important to have the display of the preview mesh edges. Display preview mesh edges because we're going to transform whatever breadth we have into a mesh. How we do this with mesh breadth. This is going to transform our mesh or our breadth into a mesh. So actually, this mesh now is defined by some vertices. Spaces are normal. They construct. You can see we have how many? We have 24 edges, we have six faces, we have colors in this case, and we have the normal of the faces. With Kangaroo, we actually calculate everything based on the points. We don't work with surfaces and usually neither vertices neither normals. We work only with the points. So more points you have, more definitions we will have, we will have for calculating. What happened right now, this surface is defined by a few points. Actually, this is not good at all. So let's increase the mesh settings. Mesh settings. Custom. We want to define this and have higher subdivision. You can see now I have subdivided my mesh into lot of vertices. And it's tricky because you can see now that actually my face is defined by four squares in the center, but triangulation in the other corners. You always want to uh, have equal subdivision on all the points. It means that we have all the faces with the same amount of subdivision. Let's see this with a rectangle surface. I think it's easier to see. Let's go to mesh or primitive. Let's go to mesh box. That will be the, the same as center box. So 
So actually, this uh, sorry, it's the base box. It's much better to have it defined like this. Why? Because we have, sorry, my computer is freezing a little bit. Let me see what's happening. Okay, that's weird. Now, this mesh is subdivided equally in all the surface. And this is much, 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 much better for calculation because if we have this, this line doesn't measure the same length as this line. That means the point, this point, are further apart from each other than this one on respect of this one. So that means the value that we're gonna set up for this distance and this distance should not be the same. In this situation, the points are equally apart. So whatever value we set up for this point will work for this point, will work for this point, and will work for this point. And in this case, no, these values have to be slightly different so they have the same mechanical properties. So actually for that, we always need to divide equally or mesh. And for that, we usually use the tools of Weaverbird. Weaverbird is a mesh treatment, the same as mesh plus. Let's see what is mesh plus. Also, we use mesh plus, we use also buffer face that works quite well for that uh, mesh plus and here and we can have loops of division for example let's try the most common ones it's smooth subdivision let's try with weighted cat mode subdivision so in this case if you subdivide this one we're gonna subdivide the box in uh, smaller cubes. And actually, this is gonna improve our calculation. As you see, it's also smoothening or shape. In this case, it's not good at all. What we can do for that is edge type. Yes? Um, on my screen, um, hello? I can't, hello, can you hear me? I probably have very poor connection. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, just want to say that I cannot see the edges line on uh, on my preview. I I know that everything is happening. Like uh, if I click on okay. this, like, but yes. I cannot show Use the control edges. M. Use control M. Edges. Here. Control display. Control display. M. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is what happened to you, no? Is this component? You need to show the edges of the mesh. Thank you. That when you are exporting a visualization, you always have it off, so you actually don't see this ugly finishing. But for working, it's much better to have them on. So with Cardinal, we need to set up in fixed. So actually, it fixes the edge. And it's well, sometimes not. So that will be on the amount of loops, how much we are smoothening this shape. I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna switch up this. Because we also can increase the amount of subdivision in bends, how smooth is for shape. Actually, be careful with the loop because it's multiplying the subdivision. And it's doing exponentially. Also, that means it takes more time to calculate. Before, with one, it was taking 21 milliseconds. Now, with five, it's going to take probably like five or 10 seconds. As you see, my computer is freezing. See who? Yeah, you just killed my computer. For kangaroo, you always want to have enough edges and enough points, but not too many. Why? Because it will slow down all the physics. 
because you will need to take much more data to calculate. Yeah, it's also happening the same for mine. Like Zoom is really for short for me. That's really annoying. And my computer is quite fast, so it's surprisingly slow. Yeah, for me this um, doesn't work at all. Like the um, this component, maybe it's the mesh plus. Okay, I'm gonna close everything. Let's. We are bird with a slightly less resource function, so let's. I'm opening right now. Then. Also, I guess we have to take consider that Zoom take a lot of resources of our computers. Yes. Actually, let's see. Wow, well, twenty-five. That's a lot. Okay. I guess Move there's over. the option out of turning off the denoise and turning off acceleration of video. So maybe that will work. Well, I don't want to touch that much because right now I'm recording too and I do want to lose the connection, but I will try next time. Okay, let's start again. Center box by focals fifty by fifty. Uh, let's go to mesh primitive mesh. Oh, no mesh plane, no mesh box. I want to have this box meshed. Okay. So let's try Weaver Bird. I know it's faster. So we can do subdivision. Again, Weaver Bird loves subdivision. They are different types, and all of them, they do it in a slightly different way. So be careful what you connect on S again. And let's go for the first one. Actually, you can see we have defined it from this kind of subdivision to this one. We have triangulated the cubes and the spaces. I don't see if you see it really well. I'm gonna reduce the amount of subdivision on the initial mesh box. It also takes less time. So we have big faces. We subdivide them in triangles. Triangles is one of the best ways that you have to do to work with Caramba, except if you want to planarize, that we will see that later on. Let's also fix the naked edges that are the ones that are outside, the ones that define for shape. You can see it's actually not working. Ooh, it's from zero to three. With the loops of division, usually you have this, you lose a little bit of accuracy, but depends on what you're doing, you want to move or not. Let's see what happens. And let's see if we level up. You see, we are defining and dividing the curve more, more and more and more. And actually that's quite good. Let's see with Cadmol Clack subdivision, what happens? What's happening? I'm gonna connect different sliders so I don't move everything at once. You see, it's time we refine, we lose a little bit of the accuracy of the cube. We have another one that is Laplacian smoothing, that obviously this one smooths out for shape. If this one was already smooth, this component, what it does is really smooth it more. So it makes the edges of everything you have less sharp. For example, one, two, three, you see, it's getting every time more like a sphere. So in this case, let's work with quad split subdivision and let's define more or less one. I don't want to use the other ones. 
So this is about trial and error on the type of subdivision that you want to use. Let me try another time. The what is loop subdivision? Oof, I'm afraid of connecting this one. Let's see. The standard subdivision is one. Okay. Not that bad. And I have triangle shapes. Probably if I connect the edges type, it will work in a much better way. So for testing, line of learning, we don't want to get really high accuracy. So let's keep with this one. Okay. <clears throat> with kangaroo, we will most of times we'll have a face, a surface the same as we have floor in the real life, we will have a surface. Right now, our model is above the surface. So let's move it up. We're going to move up our model. Set. I'm going to switch like this. I'm going to move it up. I don't know, 50. I don't know the size of how much I need to move it up. I'm going to locate it a little bit in the air. Why? Because we're going to do a simulation of a bouncing ball, a basketball ball that in this case is a basketball cube. OK, we have a mesh. And we need to be really clean with kangaroo on how we define things. So we will have a geometry part. Here is we're going to define the rules of our physics engine. Kangaroo, kangaroo, kangaroo. With kangaroo, we will have a second part that will be the rules, more or less, of what is going to happen. And we have the engine. That is what is going to calculate everything. For the rules, we need to see have established different rules. Okay, let's establish the first rule. We want to see the mesh. This is something silly, but we need to see the mesh. So it means we want to show the mesh. Okay, what is the next rule? It's a basketball ball. So we want to inflate a little bit our geometry. So we connect the mesh, and we're going to set up a strength. Some components of kangaroo needs really high values, and other ones need really, really small values. And this is, I'm sorry to say this, this is about experience. You just need to have used the components a lot. So we're going to use a really small pressure. Really small pressure, usually 1.05. Being one, keep as you are. Being higher than one, inflate a little bit. Being below one will be deflate. So we want to inflate a little bit. When you inflate something, for example, a balloon, you need to, what is keeping the balloon from exploding? The surface tension of the material, no? The material is trying to push everything together, the air. So it's compressing it. So for that, we need to establish the rule that if we are inflating the, these points, that it means we want to move them apart. We want something that fights, fights against this force. It's trying to have a force that tries to keep everything together. That will be mesh edge length. That it means we want that this mesh has a maximum length factor of something. What is this? If let's state that this line measures one, we want that the flexibility, it means the straightening, the strengthen of this line is until a certain number. So that means we, want, we can inflate or make the line longer 1.5 times its own length. So if this measure one, the maximum factor that we can 
make it longer is 1.5. And the strength is how strong this force is. If the, if the force is really small, it's going to go beyond the length factor. Why? Because this force will not be able to fight, fight against the pressure load. It's a fight between different things all the time. And it's about setting up the values to make it work properly. Actually, with kangaroo, you will find out that a lot of things just explode suddenly or start making super weird things. Because the values that you set up for the fast forces fighting each other are low. So I'm going to set up a strength of 10, for example. I, initially, these numbers should work, more or less. And we will have also something that is floor. Where is floor? I never use these things for looking for the components. I just remember. I don't know. You will also need gravity. Yes, yeah, that's another thing. Right now, that's another force. You are really good, actually, David. So the, what is the strength of the floor? I want a really hard floor, and I don't want that my ball bounces through my floor. Let's say you can have a semi-brittle floor. So I'm going to set up a really strong floor. And what will be another force? Actually, is the gravity. For that, we can use different weights. That is vertex load. That is a mesh. Uh, mesh to apply the strength. Vertex load, and I think it's better to use load for this. I think it's better. These components work in a different way. Vertex load applies the force based on the normal of the shape. So we don't control the direction of the force. With load, what we set up is the points where we want to set up the force and the direction. What will be the gravity, guys? A Z of negative, because we want to go negative in Z, of, OK, gravity force, how much? Come on. 9.81. Okay. Yeah. What's the problem? We have a mesh, but we don't have points. So we need to deconstruct the mesh for that. We have something that is called mesh vertices. I don't have the plugin installed, so we can do the traditional way, that is deconstruct the mesh. If we deconstruct the mesh, we have the vertices and we have the loads. Okay, this is our basic setup of rules. Let's test it. We're gonna merge all these forces together. Show has to be always the first one. Okay. And we want all of them flattened. Really important too. If not, we will calculate different models altogether. We will calculate one model for this, one model for this, one model for this, one model for this, and one model for this. I always flatten at the end, just in case I forget one of them. Edu. Yes. Um, my load component, my load node, has one more. Uh, okay. Yeah, as, as the weight. <laughs> the same one? Uh, I might have a different version of Caramba. Maybe, okay. the, maybe the weight is a strength. Is there? Okay. So, uh, I'll try. Yeah. What components do you have? The points, force vector, and... And the uh, weight, weighting, color weighting factor. I maybe maybe David, so yes, so yes, 
Okay, uh, maybe the weight factor is a strength multiplier of the force. I don't mm -hmm. know. It says the value goes from zero to one and uh, is um, set as one. But I don't know. Probably nothing will. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a scaling factor of the force. Probably. Okay. okay. Makes sense. Okay, we have set up all the conditions. So now we need to set up the solver. In main, you have different type of solver. Solver is what is going to make all the calculations and it's going to show up what is happening. Uh, what sorry. Up? Yes. Uh, how do you have more uh, inputs in mesh in the merge component? Uh, as long as you connect something, it's going to... Ah, it's going to create another one? Yes. If not, you can zoom in and just click on plus. So we have bouncy solver that is a motor engine that is going to calculate everything slowly. And actually it's nice because we don't want to see the final result. What we want to do is a physical animation, no? A physical simulation. So we want to see all the steps and everything, how it's being, how it happened. We have the solver that is similar but simple. And we have the animation solver. A step solver that actually this is this is why we first teach animation today because you can record everything from the, that is happening in, in kangaroo that is nice we can merge animation and kangaroo together so we can think everything bouncing down and, down and we have the zombie solver that only shows up the final result so it's much faster but only shows the final that is nice if you are making something that you want to, for example, throw balls on a surface and you see where are the final locations of the balls in the surface. You don't want to see how they react to the surface. Let's go to bouncy solver. We have the goal objects or goals are or values. Okay, you see that something just happened really weird. So let's first put a boolean. We don't want to show it. False. Turn it off, please. Okay. We have the reset because each time we calculate and we change something, we need to reset. So we need a button to reset the calculation. We have some thresholds, tolerances, and damping. Tolerance and threshold, I will not touch. I will mostly touch uh, damping. Usually, by defect, is 0.99. That is solve everything, but kind of smoothen. It's like going into muddy waters. If you reduce the damping, what you will do is reduce the strength of all the forces at once. So when you click through, what is happening is you suddenly release all the forces. Sometimes, for some models that are really sensible, you don't want that to happen. You want to have everything being all the forces going slowly and smooth to our object. The bad point of happening of that happens with dampening is that if you dampen too much, you are not getting a real physics simulation. You are kind of smoothing in all the forces. So the, the model it might not be react how it should actually react in reality. So I usually set up a dampening of 0 0.98, slightly lower. <clears throat> and we're gonna hide everything. And we're gonna reset. Remember that the animation is false. If we go to E, we can see how many times we have go through the solver. It's really similar in a way of anemone. It's going to calculate one, two, three times based on the change of the solver. Oh, like, for example, you remember the point was moving a little bit and a little bit and a little bit and a little bit. So it was moving on respect of the previous one. With kangaroo, we do the same. We calculate one, something happens, and we calculate again based on that previous change. So that are called interactions. We have the point list that in this case, we don't want them. And we have a goal function. 
of outputs. It means it's outputting everything that is happening here. Why we have show, see, connect show the first one? Because in this list, the first thing to show is the mesh. That is actually what we want. So what we're going to do is list item that one. We just want to see the mesh. OK, and we hide everything. Now we only see the mesh. Before you switch on anything, save this script. <laughs> Before turning on anything in Caramba, in Kangaroo, always save the script. So let's see what happened when I switch it on. Boom. What happened? Explodes. Actually, I have too much pressure or not enough surface tension on my board. So I'm going to switch off and I'm going to augment the strength factor of my mesh, 1000. I'm going to try again. I need to bounce back. You see? Ooh. Has made something weird that is inflates suddenly and it's slightly inflating and going down. I'm going to switch off and I'm going to uh, reduce the length factor, for example, to one, so it keeps the shape. And I'm going to augment a little bit. And you see that, okay, let's explain everything that is happening closely. First thing I'm setting up. is oh, I have to stop it really fast sorry first I have set up a edge length of what 1.5 that means all the edges have to first grow to 1.5 and my force on this is really high so this one will take a lot of priority so first, the ball is, in, is making the lines elongated 1.5. What is happening next? The inflation starts because it's the second factor of force in priority of force. After it inflates, stabilizes, and you see it's going down because the last force that I have submitted is actually the pulling down force. So to avoid the first weird part, I'm going to reduce the ledge end to one. And I'm going to augment a little bit the pressure. And also, my cube is not really high, so I'm going to move it higher. So we can bounce it to the floor. And I'm also going to augment the load because it was going really slow. So I'm gonna make it fifth, for example, so it goes faster. I'm just changing some values in the script. You see, I have set up a pressure of 1.5. It's length, I want to keep the same distance and size of the length, but I have make it really strong so it doesn't explode. My floor is still really strong and I have augmented the load. so it goes down faster. Let's see what happened now. Reset and go. So it's inflating and going down. I'm going to dampen less so it goes faster. You see, the force is crashing my cube, and actually, the force is higher than the inflation. Be careful doing this, don't move the slider, spot setup number. Okay, two. I have inflate a little bit my cube. Let's see with five. Look.
है दू Edu, we can't hear you. Edu, can we have a slow panoramic of all the values, please, once again? Because mine is not doing anything. Hello, do you hear me? Yes, now. Okay, because it was saying it was not working my audio. Can someone talk? I don't know if I'm not hearing you or something. Yes. Yes, yes we can hear you. Yes, we I can don't hear you. Hear you. Yes, we can. Now we can hear you. Hello? Uh, no? He doesn't we can hear, hear you now. You can't hear us. Wait. No, I can't hear you. Okay, hello, Marco? Hello. Hello? Hello? I'm speaking. Okay, now, now I can hear you, yes. Yes, I hear you. Good. Okay. Um, could we have a um, scroll back and check, uh, like make a sort of um, <clears throat> tour of all the values because mine is not really behaving. Okay. Yes, yes. mine is red, the bouncing. Uh, Bouncy solver, okay. Solver. When, you have a, when you have a red and something red, for example, me connect this a silly thing. It's hot, it's not uh, construct point. Yeah, it says see. cannot cast from source Red. type to destination. Go over type. here, yes, and you can yes, see. Oh. Yeah, it says uh, cannot cast from source type to destination. Type. Okay, you have connected. Mm -hmm. Also, what's the shortcut for hiding? Hiding things? Mm. You mean this? Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, or... You can click in the center of the mouse. Oh. The middle button. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks. Okay. So I will go step by step. Okay. So we have first created a box and we have divided our box. We have transformed it into a mesh. We have divided slightly more, so we got more edges and more definition. And we have moved it up, so it will bounce on the floor. Yes? This is the geometry part. And you see, I always state a clear difference and I connect everything to just one component. We have the rules. That is, first, we want to see our mesh. We want to see this mesh. And we have pressure. We connect the mesh to pressure. The pressure will depend on different things. First is the size of a model. And second is the amount of subdivision. Usually more subdivision, lower values you will need because you will have more force on each point. So you have more points, you need to subdivide the same amount of force between the double amount of points. You know what I mean? It's not having the same, for example. Is I have a surface like this and my load is 10 is not say the same having four small surfaces with 10. Got it. And in your case, 10. the strength got... is um, eight? Eight. Eight, so okay. Because so actually, if you, uh, if you apply 10, 10 to each one of the faces, you get 40. So actually, we, if you are reducing by half, what you also need to do is reduce the force by half. In this case, will be, uh, well, let's divide it by five. <laughs> it will be two, two on each face. So actually the value of force for this one will be two. So we get the force. And we have edge length, that is a, 
what keeps everything with the surface tension. So I have set up, keep the same distance between the length and extreme floor is 1002. And okay. I have deconstruct I have deconstruct my mesh to get the points and have a negative force of 50 because it was falling down too soft. Okay. When I have this, Daphne like flatten everything. Important. Yeah, I did it. And you are not seeing any error message here. Oh, flatten also at the exit. Daphne? Yes. Can yes. you stay there for a bit? Because I don't have another screen, so it's really difficult for me to... Uh, uh, don't worry. Like this is better? Okay, I might have a different... Uh, what is the component you use for pressure? It's mesh... Uh, Go, gold mesh uh, pressure. Uh, I think I have this one, but instead of... Uh, maybe, maybe it's because you are using the component from Kangaroo 0 0.99 and that might give you some errors if you use the other one. You have this yeah. one, no? Mm, no, 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 no. Okay, I don't use the, that one, use this one. No, I have the Kangaroo too, but instead of stre uh, strength, it says pressure level. level. Mm. I don't know, I will figure it out. Um, I do. Yes? You were saying something about the priority of the forces. Uh, no, the priority of the forces, actually it doesn't matter how you connect in which order. What matters is that show is always the first one. But that's only because we want to have it easy to find in the list. Okay. The priority of the force, when I talk about priority of the force, is this force has the same strength as this one. But this one is a smaller one. But that doesn't mean this is proportional, because inside each component behaves in a different way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's about tweaking up the numbers, and this is something that Lot of that's why a lot of people love kangaroo and some people hate kangaroo. Mm -hmm. the difference between one thousand and eight. Okay, it's working. It's running, but how do I stop it? <laughs> uh, here, pause. Sorry, pause. Uh, running. Uh, no, can pause. My toggle button doesn't work. <laughs> Can I ask you, is, imp is it important to put the true false first? Because when I connected it to the goal object, it crashed. Because I guess I didn't have the... Yeah, false because actually you are... Uh, yeah. They have the loop yes. forever going, right? If you don't have it connected, it's always on. Yeah, that's what happened to me. And now I don't have anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If it's crashing, reduce your subdivision. I know it's not the best right now, but also we make everything much faster. You see, I just change subdivision. Actually, don't do the, uh, always reset and stop before calculating anything. You see, the ball is bouncing. I'm going to stop everything, move the ball slightly lower. Okay, here. And I'm going to reduce the force just because I want. <laughs> so let's see other forces. For example, just talking about meshes, we can have uh, a smooth that is softened or mesh. 
make it softer in general. It will be the same as Laplace and smoothing. Actually, I usually don't use this unless I want to have something that is really fluffy, like a bunny, flexible bunny or something like that. But let's just connect it in case. Let's have a, this one is really at around good between zero to 100. Okay. And let's also put volume, for example, volume, the good point of volume is we can set up limits in volume. We can do it this by H, H length and volume actually are really similar. But with volume, we can calculate, for example, the volume of the mesh, no? Volume. This is good if you are working with fluids. The volume of the mesh is a lot, <laughs> actually, right now. So we can set up that the maximum volume, if this mesh was one liter, we can calculate it to be 1.5. This is good if you want to fabricate something and you uh, want to be sure that you are not going over your maximum volume. This will be useful in case you are using it for molding and casting, for example, that you know the exact amount of volume that you need for your casting. A really good one that is really tricky to use, more tricky, uh, useful to use, and you can find a lot of different ways to use it, is wind. You can generate wind. Actually, similar to load. Really, really similar. I would say it's almost the same. But we just set up a direction and a strength of the wind. Right now, it's in X1. Let's apply to our mesh the wind. Okay, and with that, we can flatten, flatten. Let's see what's happening. You see, my ball is moving on the side more than on the Z. Woo, it's flying away. I usually put the reset button close to here. So now my ball is moving and it's being dragged on the floor and it's moving, being bounced away. But this is not really realistic wind, though. No? Why? Because we have a constant vector. Wind is never constant. So for that, actually, you will need to reproduce wind in a different way. Let's don't worry about that. Let's go over other ones. For example, anchor. Sorry? Okay. Anchor. Anchor is actually to... I don't know if I'm having audio problems or that you're not saying anything. No, you don't have any audio problems. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we have anchor. Anchor is to anchor something so the model doesn't move away too much. For example, right now my ball was disappearing in the endless space of the vectorial modeling. So for example, let's say I want to hold my box in this corner. We have the vertex. What we can do is one is list item and find for the vectors we want to actually choose. That will be one solution. Usually this model is super easy, but other ones are really, really tricky. So I, what I do is closest point. Closest point. And I'm gonna find a point. I'm gonna make a point in Grasscope in Rhino. And I'm gonna move it, for example, in the space so I can easily find it. And I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna find it. So I have to make the reference of my point. Set one point, yes. This is the point that I want to look at the closest point. And I have a cloud of points. It means I want to search among all these points. And it's gonna give me, for example, that one. No, I don't want that one. I want this one. Okay. 
is closer. So this point is the closer one to that one. I think that is one of the easiest way to find a closest point. So I want that this point is an anchor. I want that the location, it will be the initial one. So I can just connect. If you don't connect, initially it will automatically be the initial one. You can set up a secondary anchor. For example, I, I can say that this anchor is attached to here. So it will pull this anchor to this point. Let's see later. And we have the strength. You see the strength is quite high because you want to anchor everything nice. If the anchor is not strong enough, it will kind of drag as you have a nail screwed to the floor, but it's a sand, sand on the beach. You can drag a nail on the sand slowly, but you can do it. It will do more or less the same. Let's put a slider. So we can move it. Actually, it's 10,000. 10,000. OK. And let's connect also to here. So right now, we have a lot of forces. We have pressure, keep the surface in tension, smash to the floor, push it to the floor, smooth my shape, wind, move it to the x, positive x. We can see it here. And anchor this point, this point. I'm going to hide this one so we can see the original anchor point. And this is my point that I'm just referencing. Let's see what happens when we simulate this. Is the strength of the anchor 10,000? Yes, some of them are even more. They are like 100,000 or 1 million. So you see, whoop, it's like a half. Um, ball flag flying away. You can see this. This edge length is not the same as this one. So actually, it's not keeping the edge length properly. So for that, I will augment, for example, to 100,000 the edge length. And you see, it's breaking up. Why? Because it could not calculate it in life. So for that, you need to reset. So right now, I'm pretty sure my edges are the same. Why is going so slow? Because there is one force that is much higher than the other ones. So it's slowing everything down. If you have one force that is too high compared to the rest ones, the other ones have almost no influence. Everything is related, all the forces are related to each other. So in this case, we, have, we see clearly that this force was too much. So let's try with 10,000. OK, everything is much faster. And we can see clearly that the point is anchoring properly. Let's reduce the anchor slowly. Slowly, slowly, you see? Now the point is trying to get close, but it's not exactly in the point. It means it's being dragged a little bit. It's like having a elastic rubber band trying to connect and it's being elongated to that point. If the anchor is too soft, actually we can drag to the floor. is being dragged. Let's augment the wind. I want to have more wind in the unit X. Let's put 10. Well, let's grow it slowly so it doesn't crash. So you can find, ooh, a mix of animations of these kind of things. OK, we have another option that sometimes is good if your model doesn't react on its own. Let's say, for example, our model right now is in a stable way, no? Let's calculate how long it takes to get to this point. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven seconds, more or less, no? Okay, now it's boring and I, for somehow I want to create uh, some actions. I can do a button and I can put a bump in a certain location. I'm gonna set up a point to be located in here, maybe closer, I don't know. Point, I want to reference my point. What points are gonna be affected? All the points from the mesh. What is the destination? It's gonna ask for the time. In this case, it's not seconds, it's what? It's interactions. So after how many interactions the model stops? Let's check at this number. More or less, let's say 1,500 in my case. So I'm gonna set up the detonation in 1,500. A strength. How strong is this force? Let's put 100. I clearly don't know this value. I never use this one. And reset. So we have to connect the same reset button. For that, I'm going to reset everything together. OK. Let's see, try to see what's happening here. So after 1,500, it's going to explode. Nothing happened. The, it's clearly the point is too far away. Let's put it here inside of the. Uh, let's reset the animation. Okay, the force in this case is really small. 10,000. Almost nothing happened actually. No, it's not affecting clearly. Ah, I'm an idiot. Sorry, I didn't connect the component. Uh, this is clearly a big failure. If you don't connect the component, for sure it's not going to work. So I'm going to reduce the strength a lot. And I'm going to calculate back. While it calculates, could you could you in, um, frame the node? And zoom in a little bit. Like this? Yeah, a little more. <laughs> Don't see values. Okay, sir. Thanks. I'm going to try to make everything. You see, now it works. It made explosion and made it move. I mean, uh, where's, where? Oh, a lot of sets here.
<laughs> the architect and me cannot be peers. <laughs> More like the whole story. Okay. <laughs> uh, there is ways actually to keep this uh more or less in some constrained way this is inflation is clearly not one of the best examples neither win but you can keep it quite controlled i don't have to show you this video but i'm gonna show you now um you can do things more or less in an accurate way Yeah, for example, this is trying to simulate wind, real wind with kites. So actually, for example, you can use wind and you can, if you measure the elongation factor properly, it means you take in this case, you don't use this one. You use, for example, clamp length and length line and plastic length. These three components can replace this one. So you take each line that is given it faces here. Uh, there is a component that is extract edges, mesh edges, this one. You can extract the edges. You can measure each one of the edges. And for example, you know that your fabric uh, is a, has a elongation factor of 1.3 because it's rubber band of this kind of like type. So you can set up this elongation that if the line measures 10 uh, with elongation factor 1.3, you can set up that the maximum elongation is 30. And above that, the material has something that is plastic length. That is, when it becomes plastic, it means the length cannot come back to the same shape. For example, that happens with metals. That means when it's not elasticus modulus, but when it's plastic elongation. So you can set up these things to actually deform your model. Um, could you could you move is these there... nodes down? Because my focus is okay. Nothing. <laughs> They're gone. Ah, sorry. This? this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Clamp line. Okay. Uh, the mesh mesh ones are easy way to work with kangaroo in a geometry. But you can do the same just instead of working directly with the mesh, you can clamp points or you can clamp uh, lines that is much more accurate. Uh, also, for example, in case of points, you have a uh, plastic anchor, for example, something that can drag on the space. That usually is happened, like you can do it with friction resistance of a surface to each other. You can associate a floor resistance. So, for example, it's not the same being on the uh, like wet, slippery plastic floor that being on like the road. So for that, I want to show you this video that is actually, for example, this was caused by initial bomb explosion to take the kite out and after the wind was elongating the cable. And the cable has a flexible modulus that I can only elongate in a certain dimension. And how you actually change, you see that the wind is moving, sometimes better, sometimes worse. In this case, the wind was the same for all the kites, but how you can produce this and not this bad wind that I will say, because this is bad wind. A good way, let's stop this animation, is with the component that we state before. What is it? Oil can. With this, you can create a series of vectors. Let's create some random vectors. You have this plugin, 
no, you don't have this plugin. So you can just create some lot of vectors. <laughs> um, for example, I don't know. Mm, let's type the vector directly. 15, comma, 15.5. Oh, sorry. Well, actually, we can type them all here. Um, multi line data. Um, I don't know. Zero, comma, three, two point ten minus ten. So it's a force down. Let's also type uh, four comma eight comma two, and I'm going to repeat. Well, why don't it repeat? So I have these vectors, these three vectors, for example. You can connect to the oil can. And it's going to make them in a loop. You can set up a timer. For example, each second change the wind direction. And you can set up a reset. For example, this is too much, so let's move the interval to two seconds, maybe. So with this vector, we can just connect it to here. And why it's not working? A strength direction of strength of the wind. Why it's not working? Hmm. Well, you can type the vector manually. Just creating by this, I will create just random vectors. Number of random vectors, 10. I'm going to start my animation. So actually now, the wind is being moved in a different way. Vector, if with vector display, we can see, vector display, we can see the direction of the wind. Let's set up the point is the origin, is construct a point, construct point, is the anchor and the vector is this one. Actually, it's this one because it's the one that we are throwing now. The vector is really small, so let's multiply it so we can see it more. Multiplication of the point by 50, for example. Oops, sorry, I made a mistake. So actually we can see how the wind is changing and how this is reacting according to the wind. So if you have the map of the wind of an area, you can reduce those winds to factors and vectors with a strength and accommodate them to this because you, have, you can calculate with the dominant wind factors. You see the interval is too small to have a reaction, so let's go to five. And I think we can multiply also a little bit so it becomes faster. Wow, that's really fast. Let's see what happens when we change the interval to one second, changing all the time the direction. Okay, this is a simple example, more or less simple, of grasshopper, of kangaroo. So let's go, we don't have that much time today, but we can continue next day. Let's all the examples that we have 
Sim. Before opening any new kangaroo, remember to turn it off, the one that you were using. So, kangaroo one is what we just did before. Actually, we are moving above. I just created with loads and points. Let's see what is happening. It's going down the same as we were doing before. The only difference between this example is that we are applying forces not to all the edges. We had the edges, the points of this sphere. But sometimes, let's say, you have a load. Imagine that you are, have a hand pressing on the top of this board. That means you are not pressing the bottom points. You are only pressing the top ones. How do you choose only those ones? We can deconstruct a point and say, if the position of the set of this point, of any of these points is higher than 30, it means higher than, for example, half of the sphere, select them. So in this case, we were selecting only these points. And we can do it by selecting a few, the ones that are higher or lower. So you can select only a few of them and just put load on those points. So it will behave differently applying force in here than in here. The rest is exactly the same as we just have done. Kangaroo. Clearly, we are not going to go through this one. It takes more time. Dome. <laughs> that one is funny. Let's choose this one. Yeah. But we're going to do it with the previous one. Okay. We have set up this script, no? It's working more or less like this. What happens, for example, if we want to have a fabric that goes up, like create kind of a dome? Let's create a dome. So for that, we always start with a circle, for example. OK. Let's create a circle of 500. I don't know. Too much. OK. And let's make a surface out of it. Boundary surface. We want to transform this into a mesh, as we have done before, mesh breadth. OK, you see the subdivision is really, really bad one. So let's go to settings. Try to see if we can get a better subdivision. OK, it's better. Still not the best. So let's try it with Weaver to subdivide it in a different way. Loop subdivision. OK, not too much. So we need to increase the point count because it's really small. OK, this much looks much better. So we have a mesh that has this kind of definition. I'm going to clean the script, OK? That will be easy. So I'm going to, for example, take out the wind. Take out the detonation. Um, we're going to also erase this. We're going to start with the initial script, script we were working with. Yes? Hello? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. okay, so we have this shape. Let's say we want to transform this into a dome. 
how we can do it? We can inflate, for example, we can pull up the force, and we need to have surface tension too. But we need to hold all the points in the perimeter. How we do this? Because if we deconstruct the mesh, well, we have all the points. Actually, it's not good. We can go and select mesh edge, edges. This component is really useful. Why? Because it gives us different things. One is naked edges. Another one is interior edges. That means that we have lines, only the exterior ones and the interior ones. It makes a difference between both. So let's select only the outer ones. Okay, if we have a line, can we get points? Yes, right. Endpoints. Points. Okay. What happened? We have the start and the end point of the end point of this line is the start point of this line. So if we connect all the points together, we're gonna have duplicated. And this model is simple, but most of times you want to have a start and end points connected together. What happens? We have much more points than lines. Actually, we have double one and they are, we are, have duplicated. For that, there is a component in Kangaroo that says duplicate, remove, duplicate points. So it cleans up or or model and we don't calculate excessive data. And actually this component is one of the most use useful components in Grasshopper. This one and remove duplicated lines too. So actually these points are the ones that we want to anchor. Remember to this or disconnect the anchor from the initial position. So let's try to simulate this. Ooh. You see, it has bounced a little bit too much. Um, I got super slow this. And actually, you see, it's bouncing out like a jelly fish because we are having the points anchor but not completely. So let's increase the answer of the points. So now, yes, it works in a much better way. What happened, for example, if we want to, actually we are pushing down the model. Let's push it up. Let's see. The force was not changing that much. Actually, this load on the points. That's good. Let's see that with the dome can get bigger because we can inflate it. We can also, for example, only stay. In this case, it's the same, it's another shape. We were doing the same strength, mesh load. In this case, instead of point loads, interior lines. These components, edge lines, could be replaced by edge length, and we were smoothening. And actually here, you see this is not flattened, this is making an error. Why this dome is happening like this? Because we have all, we have get all the exterior edges in the, where is, Anchors, yes. But we have extracted only the corners. I mean, some points of the mesh, because this mesh was simple. Let's try to do this with our shape. Oh. 
or shape right now is circle, so it will not have corners. So we need to draw a polyline, polyline. Remember to switch off your engine. And instead of connecting the circle, we will connect the curve. In this case, it's a polyline, but we can also connect in this component. Okay, as you see, the mesh refining is not helping us at all. So, how we can avoid this situation? Don't use Weirberg loop subdivision. Don't use it. But what we'll do is refine here. Refine the minimum amount of watts. It means the minimum amount of faces that we might have are going to be, I don't know, 50. Okay, we can do it here. For example, the aspect ratio of the initial grid, the maximum distance, maximum angles between the quads. Let's reduce this one. The minimum, maximum, minimum edge length is 10, so we don't have really small edges. If we augment the quad, let's make it also this number bigger. The minimum edge is this one. Okay. It's about playing a little bit with the values. Not the cleanest mesh ever, but I think it will work for now. So, we had before was doing the same thing as the sorry? the component of the wave bird was doing exactly the same thing as what we're doing now with this. Uh, yes, we are it's doing the same, but the problem is we were losing the corners and we don't want to lose the corners. I do you can use the fixed corner in a river bird, so it's but it was not working. Yeah, we were uh, okay here. You have the option to fix naked edges. The problem is sometimes it doesn't work that well. Okay. For example, if I wanted to fix, sometimes it works, sometimes not. It's silly, but let's see if this one was working better. Okay. No? Okay, better. Yeah, you're right. This case was working well. Before, no. Okay. Let's keep it like this. I just right click on the component and say fixed. You can also set up a number here. Okay, and this is a trick because you can do this in different ways. Let's say that we don't want to have all the points fixed. We just want to have the discontinuity points, no? You don't need to process everything in the mesh in case of polyline. This is a curve, no? There's a component called discontinuity that actually will take out, you see, the points of the initial curve. And you see that these points actually match the mesh points. If the points match, it doesn't matter that it doesn't become from the mesh because a point in a certain location is a point for the program. It doesn't matter if the initial geometry is a mesh, if this is a prep, if it's a curve, if it's a line. So if the point is the same, we still can use them. So let's anchor only those points. This is one option. An other option is get mesh edges there is a component in kangaroo that does this uh, what is kangaroo mesh corners here that will also take out the points doing this from the mesh and doing this from the curve is the same
So, who actually, what is happening? Uh, yeah, we have a lot of points, but we are having a positive force and it's colliding. And it's not working properly. Why? Because the force of inflation, we have an open surface, no? Before we were treating all the surface with fixing the points on the edge. So even if the surface is not closed, was open, as we were grabbing all the edges point of the mesh, it considered for the problem that it was closed. Right now we are only grabbing a few points. So it considered it's open. So if it's open, it is making pressure on all the faces from the Z. So actually we cannot use pressure now. What we need to use is load, vertical load. And if you reduce the mesh length factor, maybe it helps. Yeah, we can ooh, stretch too much. This is really sensible right now because we have lost a big force. So actually we can create kind of a domi pavilion. If we increase the point count, that is a really bad idea to do this right now in life. becomes better and better and you see in three it just exploded i see someone talking in the chat instagram instagram sharing don't know if I want to open in class, we are recording. Um, so, okay, um, more or less, this is a small introduction to Caramba and how to make animations. Uh, on, it's already two, I think it's lunchtime. You will be hungry, most of you. Um, we will, let's finish with something funny and fast that is the solver step solver what is the step solver step solver as i said before is the same but for animation so how it works we have the same tolerance momentum damping subiterations this maybe we need to pick but usually not and animate for using this this component we use what how we do animations with the sliders, yes. We just need a slider. So let's connect this one like this and let's switch off this one and go. So actually, you already know how to move your model from and rotate around, no? So, okay, so let's hide this and let's animate, you see? I can do procedural animation. So actually, I can record everything. You see, most of the times, this it becomes useless because the model is not working anymore. So for that, you can reduce the subinteractions or augment them. So let's try from one. So each cycle, it thinks less of the animation. So, ooh. Okay, you see, we just reduces a lot. That means we have not reached the total deployment of this dome. Let's try with five. Let's see. Almost. Actually, nine was quite nice. Ten. Ah, no, 
actually something between eight and nine. That's quite good. So actually with animate, we can connect the same slider that we use for movement to the animation. So actually we can export whatever shape we have, rotational recording. I'm just gonna copy this so we actually can see. This is gonna be a Frankenstein, but a nice working Frankenstein. What is the center of our object? More or less easy. Cool. Is the center point of the polyline. Center, okay. We know the radius of this circle is too small, so let's make it bigger. Mm -hmm. And let's move in Z a lot, 200, let's make it bigger. I think like this, it will work. Not really good, but let's move also the other point. Okay. So with this and the same slider that we use for animation in the path, we can set up everything. I'm going to set up a custom preview. So I can do it in Arctic mode. I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna create a floor. Arctic. I hide my curve. And now I'm ready to export my animation. Animate, desktop, Animation, low resolution. I actually don't know the frame count. I'm gonna just invent a number. Uh, 310 seconds, let's say 300. Mm, I don't want to go crazy in the resolution. So, 720, yalla. You see, actually, now the model, the model is not moving anymore, and this is useless. I'm losing my time. So what I can do, so it doesn't save anything, is click, right click, and say log solver. So now it's not saving images. It's this little trick. And that's it for today, guys. Nice. I, I hope Thank you. Thank you. So when when do we have the point um, cloud tutorial, Grasshopper, or photograph? Uh, we already had it like three weeks ago. <laughs> Armand was. On I it. mean, yeah. If if it was Friday, we definitely had class because I would be there. <laughs> okay. No. So, let's uh, let's go over it on on Monday. Monday afternoon, the Maker Club. You have the pres presentation, I think. No, but no you don't have anything uh, like that. After. I, I already checked the schedule. We, d we don't have it at the same time. I think it's you, have, you have submission on, on Tuesday, but you don't have anything on Monday afternoon. Okay. Yeah, okay. actually, I'm looking at the schedule right now. I thought we had... Uh, you have 10 to 2 p.m. Yeah, and the Maker exactly. Club it starts from 4 to 6. Okay. Excited.
Okay, so next, Mirkla, we will keep working a little bit on two different things of so, kangaroo, like planar eyes. That is nice because it makes you, right now, for example, this shape. Uh, okay, this is not the, ah, you don't see, but the shape, the faces of the mesh are not planar. It means it's not flat. You can't compute it, but you cannot fabricate it with, let's say, a wood plank or a propylene, propylene plank that you can laser cut. So the assumption that is called planarized, that is transform all the mesh faces into planes. So actually, after you do that, you can unroll it and fabricate it, for example, with a laser cut. That is quite useful. Nice. Yes. Zoe is getting too excited now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very excited with these classes. Uh, did I went too fast today or it was okay? No, you were fine. It's just uh, if you don't have a screen, it's difficult. Yeah, I suppose. I think we'll have to review the recording, but it's good that we have the recording. Okay. Okay. Thank Talking you. about the recording, I'm going to stop the recording. Stop the recording. Do you want to stop the recording? Okay.